Hey guys, Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Uh, this video I want to be taking a look at radio edits. Um, these always used to be a real irritation for me. I'm not a fan of doing radio edits at all, but you are going to get asked by labels to do them. Um, so this is just a quick little tip. It might seem very obvious, but it's a massive time saver um, once you know about it. So let's just jump in and take a look at this. Right, so I've got a track here that's finished, uh, all loaded up, and it's ready for mastering and needs to be exported. Now, you are pretty much always going to be asked um, to do a radio edit with most labels. Um, they require a edit done at around about 3 minutes 30 seconds for streaming, like iTunes, or if it's going to get uh, playlisted on the radio, it needs to be a shorter version as well. They won't playlist a 7 minute long track. Um, so for the longest time, I used to... Uh, save a new project when I was finished and and this tip might seem a little bit obvious to some of you but for me for a long a long time I was doing it a bit of a backwards way so I used to save a new project as a radio edit project do my radio edit and then export that one and then export this one so you have two uh, files uh, the problem is then if you go to mastering and you're mastering in an external project um, if there's any issues that you need to come back and change the problem that you'd have was then you would have to make the changes on the extended edit and then open up the radio edit and then make the same changes once again so the quickest way to do a radio edit is actually to do them in the same project and you'll see if i zoom out now i've actually copied the whole project again over here and redone uh, or done the radio edits, cut everything down to the correct time. Um, and I'm going to just show you a couple of little tricks to streamline this process as well. So first things first, you want to just grab your entire project uh, that's finished. Um, set your markers to the whole track. And in Cubase, you can use, well, let's just check that we have the whole thing. I need to do fades and stuff on that still but anyway so we've got our project there uh, once you've set your locators you can just go to the select menu um, or from the top over here and select all in loop you can now just take this and hold down alt and drag the entire project over to the right uh, like so so you have your radio edit that you can start working on on the side here. Um, now I've already done that, so I've already got the radio edit, so I'm just gonna remove that copy that I just put in there. So our radio edit is this one down here. Um, now I'm gonna show you how to set up um, cycle markers that you can actually export your radio edits and um, your extended versions at exactly the same time. What you wanna do is you wanna go and add a, uh, I like to add a ruler track just so I can get an idea of uh, the times on the edits. Uh, I also often work with um, the arranger track on just simply because the arranger track is easier to see than the cycle markers it really doesn't serve any purpose other than being more visible um, when I'm doing these edits just to kind of get around uh, these are more for when you wanted to copy whole parts of the track um, and create choruses and things that's what they actually designed for um, but they are easier to see when you're busy moving around the project. Now, the other thing that you're gonna do is add a marker channel, um, which we can do there. So you see, I had these already put in. I'm just gonna delete those quickly so we can actually just show you how to do new ones. Uh, so you have your markers like the, uh, that you can add in here, and you'll see they pop up on the side. Uh, they add the markers at your uh, cursor or at your uh, play, playhead. Um, we're going to remove those quickly as well and what we want to be doing is adding cycle markers instead of uh, static markers like that. There we go. Um, and you see this little button next to it, this is a cycle marker. So the cycle marker is going to insert in the current selection that you have. So we'll just grab our extended mix there quickly. Add a cycle marker and you'll see this will add a marker that spans the whole um, loop range that you have here. And we're gonna go rename this to Extended Edit. 
and then we're gonna have to head over to the radio edits on the side and it's you see this is why I have this one in here so it's easy to just grab a loop point you can just hit the radio that you have hit the loop uh, to encompass that um, arranger section and add another cycle marker we're gonna rename this one radio edits right so how this uh, is going to benefit us now is uh, when we go to export our track uh, we can go to export audio mix down um, you'll see you have batch exporting options here for multiple channels but you also have exporting between multiple cycle markers which we can select here so you'll see this changes now for your cycle markers will pop up over here uh, the id and then the uh, name for the cycle marker you want to make sure that both of these are highlighted and then we're going to set up a naming scheme to automatically name all our all our edits as well for us. <clears throat> so what you want to do is come in here, you're going to have name first. Uh, we're going to remove cycle marker ID and we're going to replace that with cycle marker name. And you can see down at the bottom here, uh, our name is Protocol Chemino Safi Redemption. And it's adding extended edits onto the end of it there uh, for us. So when we bounce, it's going to bounce down both cycle markers independently from one another as two separate files and rename them for us um, super simple and saves you a bit of time when you're exporting for mastering so all you need to do now is perform audio export and there you have it it'll do both files at exactly the same time and they are both ready for mastering cool so i hope that helped and i will catch you guys in the next video cheers Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.